Welcome to the Level 1 Economics Summary Video Series. This video is a summary of the reading on monetary and fiscal policy. So quick overview of monetary policy. Monetary policy deals with determining the quantity of money supplied by the central bank. The major aim of monetary policy is to achieve economic growth and price level stability. An expansionary monetary policy is where the central bank increases money supply, decreases interest rates and tries to increase aggregate demand. More money and credit is available to consumers. Contractionary monetary policy is where the central bank tries to decrease the money supply, increase interest rates, tries to slow down economic growth in order to reduce inflation and achieve price level stability. Money is defined as a medium of exchange with the following qualities ready acceptance, divisibility, high value relative to weight and difficult to counterfeit. The functions of money include medium of exchange, store of value and unit of account. Money is more efficient than a barter system. Money supply is determined by central banks with the goal of managing inflation and other variables. In a fractional reserve system, new money created is a multiple of new excess reserves available for lending by banks. The potential multiplier is equal to the reciprocal of the reserve requirement. So if the reserve requirement is 10% or 0.1, then the potential multiplier is 1 over 0.1, which is equal to 10. The factors affecting demand for money are shown here. Transactional demand for buying goods and services, so increases with GDP. This is the money that we want for our regular transactions. If the GDP increases, incomes increase, then the demand for transactional money increases. Precautionary demand to meet unforeseen future needs and speculative demand to take advantage of investment opportunities. So if we believe that the stock market will crash, then a speculative demand for money will go up. If we believe that the market is going to do extremely well, then our demand for money will be low because we will want to put our money in the stock market. The Fisher effect states that a nominal risk-free interest rate is equal to the real interest rate generally denoted by R plus the inflation. So roughly speaking, your nominal interest rate, say denoted by N, is equal to the real interest rate plus inflation. Role of the central bank. The role of the central bank is as follows. Supply currency, act as a banker to the government and to other banks, regulate and supervise the payment systems, act as a lender of the last resort, hold the nation's gold and foreign currency reserves and conduct monetary policy. The tools available to the central bank are shown right here. They can change the policy rate. They can change the reserve requirement and the biggest one which is done most often is open market operations which is the method used to control money supply and by controlling money supply the central bank controls interest rates. In an expansionary monetary policy the central bank decreases the policy rate or it might decrease the reserve requirement and make open market purchases of securities. These are linked by making open market purchases automatically the money supply is increasing and the policy rate is decreasing. The picture that I want you to have in mind is the following. So this is the quantity of money. This is interest rates. Let's say that this is the demand for money. This vertical line represents money supply at a given point in time. If money supply shifts right, then what happens to interest rates goes down. So you you by controlling the money supply you automatically impact the uh, short term interest rates a contractionary monetary policy is the opposite here a central bank makes open market sales of securities which means that it is pulling money out of the system so this particular money supply will move left which means that interest rates will go up and this slows down growth cuts back inflation Effective central banks display three major qualities, independence from political interference, 
credibility, which means that the market participants believe what the central bank is saying, and transparency, which means clear policy on economic indicators. Effectiveness of the central bank. Monetary policy may not work as intended because central banks cannot control the following. They cannot control the amount of money households and corporations put in the bank on deposit. And remember, with the fractional reserve system, the multiplier kicks in when a deposit is made. But the central bank cannot control how much money people or corporations deposit in the bank. Also, the central bank cannot control the bank's willingness to make further loans. Short-term interest rates cannot be reduced below zero. As we have seen as part of our regular course, deflation can be a huge problem. So that is why central banks try to keep the inflation rate a little bit in positive territory. Generally, in developed countries, it will be in the 2 to 3% range. Under developed financial markets, rapid financial innovation and lack of credibility of monetary authority may also, may also hinder the utility of monetary policy. The real trend rate is the long-term sustainable growth rate of an economy. The neutral interest rate, this is the rate at which there is neither an inflationary pressure, neither a pressure to slow down the economy. So the neutral interest rate is the sum of the trend rate. So let's say that you have an economy that long term is growing at 4% and the target inflation rate is 2%, then the neutral interest rate would be 4 plus 2, which is 6. A rate higher than 6 would cause the economy to slow down. A rate lower than 6 would be considered expansionary. Monetary policy is said to be contractionary when the policy rate is above the neutral rate and expansionary when the policy rate is below the neutral rate. Fiscal policy. Fiscal policy refers to the taxing and spending policies of the government with the following objectives. Influence the level of economic activity, redistribute wealth or income, allocate resources among industries, and improve balance of payments of uh, and improve the balance of payments position there might be other objectives but these often are the major ones a budget surplus occurs when tax revenue generally denoted by t exceed government spending generally denoted by g this sort of a situation where tax revenue is greater than government spending is called contractionary fiscal policy a budget deficit occurs where the opposite is happening. The tax revenue is less than government spending, and this is an expansionary fiscal policy. The spending tools for fiscal policy include transfer payments, government giving money to its citizens, spending on various projects, or larger capital spending on maybe infrastructure projects. Revenue tools include direct and indirect taxation. One fiscal policy tool is an automatic stabilizer or automatic stabilizers. These moderate the business cycle automatically. Examples of automatic stabilizers are taxes and transfer payments. Taxes in almost all countries are progressive. As the economy heats or grows, taxes go up, which tends to slow the economy down. If the economy goes into a recession or into a downward cycle, then taxes automatically decrease, which again moderates the business cycle. Keynesian economists believe that discretionary fiscal policy can stabilize the economy. So as we saw earlier, if an economy is in a recession, then the Keynesian economists will argue for fiscal policy measures to kick the economy out of a recession. Monetarists do not have a strong view or would prefer that if there is a recession, that monetary policy should be used. So monetarists will say that there should be a stable supply of money. The debate on fiscal policy. Fiscal policy is difficult to execute because it suffers from several lags. One is the recognition lag. This is the time taken to recognize that a given fiscal policy needs to change. Action lag is the time taken by the government to enact the required fiscal policy change. And impact lag is the time for fiscal policy to affect economic activity. What are the arguments for being concerned with the size of the fiscal deficit? So these are people who are saying that fiscal deficits are bad. What do they say? They say that higher future taxes will lead to disincentives to work, negatively affecting long-term economic growth. Fiscal deficits may not be financed by the market when debt levels are high. 
So obviously fiscal deficit needs to be financed and certain people say that this will become hard if the fiscal deficit becomes too large. And then very testable is this crowding out effect. A large fiscal deficit has a crowding out effect. This can occur as government borrowing increases demand for loanable funds, thus leading to increased interest rates and decreased private sector investments. So high fiscal deficit would mean high rates. High rates would mean that the private sector cannot get money easily and the private sector then will invest less. Arguments against being concerned with the size of the fiscal deficit. One is that the debt can be financed by domestic citizens. Deficits for capital spending can boost productivity of the economy. In other words, if you are in a fiscal deficit because you have used money to buy capital which will improve the economy, then that is a necessary investment. Another argument has to do with Ricardian equivalence. According to Ricardian equivalence, the private savings will rise in anticipation of the need to pay to repay principal on government debt. And finally, at below full employment levels, deficits do not necessarily crowd out private investments. So anyway, these are the arguments against being concerned with the size of the fiscal deficit. Which one is right? We don't really need to worry about it. You just need to know that different arguments exist. In the real world, obviously, you will understand the situation of the country that you are evaluating to figure out whether the fiscal deficit is a concern or not. If you found this lecture helpful, then I'll be very grateful if you can do three things for me. Number one, like this video. Number two, like my Facebook page. And number three, visit analystforum.com and there add my logo to your studying with profile. You can see this slide for help on how to do that. Thank you very much and good luck with your studies.